This presentation provides an overview of the main protection functionality available for Digsilent Power Factory. There are two main license modules available for the provision of protection functionality in Power Factory. The Basic and Time Overcurrent Protection module provides the core protection functionality and facilitates modeling and analysis involving time overcurrent, directional, as well as differential relays. This core protection functionality can be further extended for the modeling and coordination of distance protection by additionally purchasing the distance protection license module. A comprehensive relay library based on a manufacturer specific protection devices is available and can be used in steady state calculations as well as for dynamic simulation. For dynamic simulation, the RMS or EMT analysis license modules will additionally be required and this further facilitates the modeling of voltage and frequency protection. If combined with the distance functionality, the RMS and EMT license modules additionally facilitate the modeling of out-of-step protection and power swing blocking. The protection device models are highly detailed and are completely aligned with Digzellent's centralized protection setting database software, Stationware thereby promoting the bi-directional exchange of settings with real protection devices. Once relays have been included in a power factory network model, advanced tools such as the Protection Coordination Assistant and the Protection Audit can be used to analyze and optimize the settings of the relays. For example, the Protection Coordination Assistant can be used to apply user-definable setting rules for the automatic calculation of distance protection reach settings. Various visualizations, plots and reports are available and configurable using PowerFactory's standard features as well as tools such as the Protection Graphic Assistant. The Protection Audit tool can be used to evaluate and identify weaknesses in the performance of existing protection settings. The relay models in PowerFactory can potentially be highly detailed and can represent many of the protective features used in modern numerical multifunction relays as well as historical devices. A large library of ready-made relay models is provided and in many cases these can be used and set directly in the network model. In other cases these models can be used as starting templates and modified according to the specific modeling needs of the user. Advanced users can create their own relay device models. A relay model is built from predefined building blocks, each of which relates to a specific function of the relay. The building blocks are highly configurable, allowing different relaying techniques used by different manufacturers and relay models to be represented. Each building block is a small model in and of itself. The building blocks are arranged within a block definition frame and interconnected using signal lines with each block having input and output signals. As an example, a relay model may contain one or more measurement blocks. The measurement blocks represent the signal processing and conditioning behavior of the real relay. Input signals are provided to the blocks by CT and VT models. For EMT simulation, the block will sample the input signal and extract the fundamental frequency component of the input signal. The calculated values will be assigned to output signals and further processed by the other blocks of the relay model. For each block, the model class it represents has a set of signal names, with each signal having a specific definition. These definitions are detailed in a set of technical reference documents which are available within the software for each model class. Users can configure the measurement block according to their application. For example, the 1 amp or 5 amp current rating of the relay can be specified as well as the sampling method. For blocks such as the time over current block, settings such as the current threshold and time dial or time delay can be specified along with the used time over current characteristic. All signal values used in the relay model can be accessed after carrying out calculations, for example short circuit calculations, or even monitored during simulations. This can be used to provide insight into the behavior of a relay model during a particular study. For simulations, plots are available to visualize the monitored signals. Signal values can also be viewed in tabular format. 
Various plots are available within the software for visualization of settings and results. Some of these are highly specific to the protection functionality and are well known to protection engineers. All plots are interactive and relay settings can easily be modified through those interactions. Here we can see time overcurrent plots as used with overcurrent protection with the relevant portion of the single line diagram shown on the left. These plots represent the tripping characteristics of coordinated relays on a logarithmic current time axis. These plots can also be used to display other characteristics which can be useful for coordination purposes. Cable damage curves, transformer damage curves, inrush characteristics, motor starting characteristics and straightforward current constants illustrating the magnitudes of current seen by relays under full or loading conditions can all be represented. Rx plots are used with distance protection. These represent the tripping characteristics of distance relays on a resistance versus reactance plane. The impedances of the protected lines and equipment can be shown on the same diagram. When calculations or simulations are carried out, the line-to-line -line and line-to-ground fault loops calculated by the relay's polarizing blocks can be illustrated and compared to the tripping characteristics of the relays. For simulations, it is possible to plot the impedance trajectory that occurs during a disturbance. This is particularly interesting for the examination of power swings and the behaviour of out-of-step and power swing blocking relays. Time distance plots are often associated with distance protection, with the plots providing a good visualisation of the reach of each zone of each relay in relation to its neighbouring devices. However, they can also be used to visualise overcurrent protection performance. The plots illustrate the variation in relay device operating time as faults are applied at intervals along the length of a specified path. The user can choose the nature of the short circuit to be applied, for example three-phase faults, line-to-line -line, or line-to-ground faults, as well as the short circuit calculation methodology. For example, the complete method, IEC 609A9, or ANSI. In order to provide a more detailed picture of the fault clearance behaviour of the protection scheme, the plots are bidirectional, showing the response of the relays to power flow from left to right in the upper diagram and from right to left in the lower diagram. Short circuit sweep diagrams have similarities with time distance diagrams, where again a configurable short circuit calculation is applied at intervals along the length of a defined path. However, in this case, any variable of any element can be observed, and not only relay tripping time. For example, the variation in current flow in a particular transformer winding, or the angle between the polarizing voltage and operating current of a directional relay element, or as in this case, the reactance of a fault loop measured by a relay. Configurable thresholds can also be added to the plot. Common short circuit sweep diagram configurations commonly used for protection purposes can be easily created using the protection graphic assistant tool. Zone reach colouring is another distance protection specific visualisation. However, in this case the visualisation is shown directly in the single line diagram instead of in a specific plot. The theoretical reach of selected distance device zone settings can be overlaid on the single line diagram based on a comparison of the zone settings to the impedance of the protected lines. Configurable colouring and shading is used to aid differentiation between zones. Zone reach colouring is also initiated using the protection graphic assistant tool. The relay operational limits or PQ diagram plot shows the starting characteristics of distance protection relays in the PQ plane. Typically, a network operator will deal with power quantities rather than impedance, current or angle quantities when characterizing the power flows and load in their network. By representing the starting characteristic in the PQ plane, the network operator is better able to compare their actual load data with the starting settings in the network's distance relays so as to assess whether particular load configurations might cause undesirable operation of network protection relays. A load configuration resulting in a power flow which lies outside of the starting characteristic of a distance relay in the PQ plane 
will cause the relay to start and may therefore result in tripping of the relay. The plot is intended to assist in avoiding such circumstances. The behaviour of differential relays can be monitored using biased differential plots. Differential characteristics showing the restraint and operate regions of the relay on a stabilising current versus differential current plane can be plotted. Additionally, phase comparison plots on a complex plane can be plotted for relays employing this particular technique. The Protection Coordination Assistant is used to automatically calculate reach settings and time delays for the time distance protection zones of distance relays. For each relay to be coordinated, PowerFactory starts at its installed location and uses a topological search to find the surrounding cables, lines and other relays which are relevant for the reach and time coordination calculations. From the information that is gathered, the relevant impedance parameters are then extracted for consideration in the setting rules. The settings rules are a flexible, user-defined set of equations which are applied to the extracted impedance parameters in order to calculate the appropriate reaches. For each zone, an operating direction is independently specified, and this direction also determines the direction of the topological search which is carried out. The search needs to be able to determine which relays are expected to coordinate with one another and this is identified from an orientation setting associated with the CTs supplying each relay. The protection coordination assistant process is carried out in two parts. During the first step the coordination setting rules are defined. The topological search is carried out and the settings are calculated. During the second step the calculated settings are reported and Accepted settings are transferred to the relay model. The setting rules which are applied can vary from company to company and for this reason the definition of setting rules needs to be flexible enough so that different users are able to recreate the coordination rules that they need. For the calculation of resistive reach an arc resistance must be assumed. PowerFactory allows the arc resistance to be specified and selected based on the voltage level at which the relay is located. Different arc resistances can also be specified for line-to-line -line resistive reaches as compared to line-to-ground resistive reaches. The equations are defined as text. Keywords, which have particular meanings within the tool, usually pertaining to minimum or maximum impedances of lines or cables, are used to construct the equations. For each zone, a different set of equations is defined. For polygonal zones, the resistive and reactive reach are usually relevant, whilst for circular zones, an impedance magnitude parameter defines the reach. It is therefore possible to specify separate equations for each of these relevant parameters. For zones which are expected to reach beyond the end of the primarily protected line, it is possible to consider a different set of equations, including an impedance reduction factor to be considered for the case if parallel lines are detected in zone 1. For the definition of the setting rule equations, the keywords can be linked using the max and min operators, as well as the standard mathematical operators. Use of max and min operators allows the equations which are defined to be conditional in nature. This facilitates the construction of equations for which there is practically no limit to their complexity. Where relays employ directional tripping elements with backup delays or non-directional tripping back backup elements, sometimes starting elements, the time delays for these elements can also be specified. For teed lines supplying a transformer which is protected by overcurrent protection, specific grading margins for coordination with the overcurrent protection can be defined and the tool will automatically identify cases where this grading time should be applied. Once settings have been calculated, the results can be viewed in a tabular report. The report shows the calculated reach for each zone of each coordinated relay along with the associated time delays. Both polygonal and circular zone reaches can be displayed. The tabular report is interactive. It is possible to use the report to find relays in the single line diagram or to mark the elements involved with the calculation of a zone. Once the settings have been evaluated and the user is satisfied with them, then they can transfer the settings to the relays directly from the report. 
This can be done on a per zone basis or a per relay basis or for all relays at once. With the settings transferred to the relays, calculations and simulations can then be performed on the network model and the performance of the new settings can be analysed in detail. The protection audit tool is used to evaluate the performance of an existing protection scheme where the settings of the relays are already known. The tool will identify weaknesses in the scheme and classify the issues in a concise colour coordinated report according to severity. Possible reasons for undertaking a protection audit include 1. To capture the impact of changes to the primary topology of the network caused by its evolution over time. Two, to see the response of the protection scheme to wide area disturbances, i.e. to see its response where a wide variety of, of faults are applied over a large area in a way for which the scheme may not have been originally designed. 3. For periodical verification purposes, e.g. to help meet the requirements of standards such as PRC 027-1. There are multiple factors that can influence the outcome of a protection audit analysis and the tool has features that give the user control over the depth of the analysis carried out. The tool is able to handle the vast number of protection relays contained within a complete grid or can alternatively be used on smaller subsets of relays or even particular functions of relays. It can be combined with PowerFactory's existing operational scenario capabilities to examine the performance of the scheme under different switching states or loading and generation states. Many different kinds of faults can be analysed, e.g. three-phase, two-phase faults and single-phase, phase-to-ground faults, all with or without selected values of fault resistance. When all these factors are combined, a large number of cases are analysed and a large amount of data is collected. It is essential that the data is presented in a usable format giving a clear indication as to where the issues in the scheme exist. At a high level, the protection audit process can be considered to consist of three main steps. The first step in carrying out a protection order is to populate the power factory model with the relays and settings which are going to be analysed. This will likely involve a lot of data gathering, where it is vital that the locations and models of relays CTs and VTs are captured and that their settings and ratios are identified. There may be scope to use the capabilities of the Dixonland Protection Setting Database Stationware to help to facilitate this. The second step is to carry out the automated calculations. As part of this step, the tool needs to build up a picture of the relationships between the relay models and the network elements that are being protected, as well as a picture of the hierarchies which exist between the relay models which are intended to coordinate with one another. Various static short circuit calculations can then be carried out considering any number of different fault types. For each fault, the response of the relays is captured for further analysis. The whole process can be repeated any number of times each time considering different operating scenarios. The final step is to present and verify the captured data. For this purpose, an additional reporting command is available that is able to generate three different reports. A report verifying relay operating times, a report verifying fault clearance times where the operating time of circuit breakers is additionally considered, a report verifying device coordination. All the reports are tabular, colour-coded and interactive, with the user able to expand the results to provide more detail where required and with the user able to use the report to help orient themselves within the single line diagram. During the calculation step, a topological search is carried out, allowing the tool to gather a picture of the relationships between the relay models and the network elements that are being protected, as well as a picture of the hierarchies which exist between the relay models which are intended to coordinate with one another. This picture is then used during the verification step. For the verification of the tripping times and fault clearance times, consider that a fault occurs on a line as shown. First, the tool identifies the relays which would be expected to provide primary protection of the faulted line. As a command setting, in this example, the user has indicated that the tripping time of the primary protection should be within at least 0.5 seconds. Next, the secondary protection for the faulted line is identified. Again, 
the user has pre-specified a maximum tripping time within which the secondary protection would be expected to operate for the applied fault, in this case within at least one second. Finally, the tertiary protection is identified and a tripping time of at least 1.5 second is specified. A similar process is carried out for fault clearance time verification but with the user specifying different fault clearance times instead of tripping times. The vast majority of the previously defined process is automated. The main thing that the user needs to specify are the general requirements for the tripping and fault clearance times and the expected severity if the general requirements are not met. The severity information is used to classify and colour code the results in a tabular report as illustrated here. A column is provided for each fault type and the width of a bar represents the full length of each protected line. Where a bar is red or orange, this corresponds with a fault location and fault type where the protection scheme failed to meet the general tripping time requirement. The failure where the bar is red is considered to be a more severe category of failure than where a bar is orange. For example, a red failure might be associated with the primary protection failing to operate within the required tripping time, whereas an orange failure might be associated with the secondary protection failing to operate within the required tripping time. Where the bar is green, the general requirement was met and no failure is reported. For each bar, we can create another report which expands on how the bar was generated. In the expanded report, the tripping time of each relevant protection device is reported for each fault location and the role it plays is highlighted. This report can be used to more accurately diagnose the cause of any tripping or fault clearance time issues. For the verification of the device coordination, the results from the topological search are again used, but in a slightly different manner. Again, consider that a fault occurs on a line as shown. Again, the tool automatically identifies the relays which would be expected to provide primary, secondary and tertiary protection for the applied fault. In this case, the tool identifies which relays are upstream and which relays are downstream in relation to the applied fault and are therefore expected to coordinate with one another. In the illustrated case, a secondary relay is identified as the upstream member of a coordination pair, whilst a primary relay is identified as the downstream member. At the start of the analysis, the user specifies a general minimum coordination margin which should be complied with, and the tool checks that the margin is met for each coordination pair for each applied fault. Additionally, coordination margins involving reverse-oriented relays are checked. In the case illustrated, the secondary relay is identified as a reverse-oriented upstream relay, which also needs to coordinate with the primary relay shown, and so this additional coordination pair is also verified against the specified coordination margin. The coordination pairs are automatically identified between all relevant relays, and margins are automatically verified for each fault examined. The device coordination verification report is similar to the tripping time and fault clearance time reports in terms of its presentation. Again, each column represents a different fault type and each bar represents the length of a particular line. Where a bar is red indicates a position on the line where the specified fault results in a coordination failure of the protection devices protecting the specified line. Conversely, where a bar is green indicates a position on the line where the coordination margin is achieved. It is again possible to generate a more detailed report for each bar, thereby showing all the identified coordination pairs and the achieved coordination margin for each pair for each fault carried out. PowerFactory also offers many additional protection features. For example, by using the same building blocks as used for relay modeling, the modelling of signal comparison and transfer tripping schemes is also possible, and just as for the relay models, these schemes can be used in both static and dynamic calculations. In addition to the well-known static short circuit approaches available in PowerFactory, such as IEC 60999, PowerFactory offers the more sophisticated short circuit trace calculation. Based on the complete short circuit method, this approach is sometimes described as a quasi-steady state calculation, or a stepped short circuit calculation. 
It is a way to consider some of the dynamic behavior of a short circuit calculation without the need for the more onerous data entry and without incurring the additional simulation time costs of a dynamic simulation. The calculation proceeds on a coarse step-by-step -step basis with the operation of relays and circuit breakers re-evaluated at each step along with the resulting redistribution of fault currents. The results are reported in tabular form showing the relay tripping times at each step with the user able to control the progression of the trace from one time step to a next. The tripped circuit breakers at each step are highlighted clearly in the single line diagram. The result is a more accurate representation of the behaviour of a protection scheme than can be gathered from static short circuit calculations alone. Arc flash analysis is available as an additional license module. The module supports various arc flash standards including IEEE 1584 2018, NFPA 70E and DGOV 203-077. Results are presented in tabular form as well as in the single line diagram and it is also possible to use the tool to create arc flash hazard labels for switchgear. Relay operations can be assumed to occur within user defined periods of time. However, when the arc flash license is combined with the protection license modules, it becomes possible to consider the operating times of the relay models included in the network in combination with power factory short circuit calculation capability. In particular, the use of the short circuit trace calculation should allow the more accurate stepped iterative representation of the protection behaviour, thereby calculating more accurate fault clearance times resulting in more accurate incident energy calculations. Stationware is a user-friendly, multi-user web application based on the latest .NET technology that combines protection setting management, asset management, of primary and secondary equipment and business process management. For protection setting management, Stationware stores and records all settings associated with protection devices. A vast library of device models is supported. User-defined device models can be created and imported with ease. Device models include multiple settings groups, range checks, descriptions and units of measurement. The presentation of setting values faithfully reflects the original software. The management of the protection settings is based on life cycles. These life cycles represent the workflows in the company and are completely configurable. Email notifications can be triggered on workflow events. All changes regarding settings, devices and locations are stored in an audit trail. Storing the data in a tamper-proof manner is essential for traceability and accountability. All settings are stored in a manufacturer independent format. Document management functionality is included and settings data can be exchanged with manufacturer specific relay setting software as well as with PowerFactory for the conduction of protection studies. As an asset management tool, all kinds of network equipment can be stored in stationware. The assets are managed in a completely user definable hierarchy consisting of locations and devices. It is possible to display locations and location relevant information in a geographic map. Assets can be identified by a unique key to link stationware to other asset management systems. Access rights can be granted on the asset hierarchy according to a user's field of responsibility. For business process management, stationware represents company specific workflows related to network equipment such as maintenance, commissioning or testing. Processes contain several tasks which map the steps that need to be processed during the execution of a process. Every process type can be equipped with a fully configurable workflow cycle. Processes and tasks can be connected to devices and settings to indicate correlation. Examples of processes include maintenance, commissioning, cyclic protection tests and arc flash label creation. The latter process can be carried out in stationware using specific arc flash process life cycles, reports and scripts. Calculated arc flash label parameters can be imported into stationware from PowerFactory. Business process management contains the same features as settings management including email notifications and audit trail support. Thank you for listening to this presentation on the protection capabilities of PowerFactory. 
In case of any further queries regarding the capabilities of the software, please contact your local representative, details of which can be found on our website www.digxalent.de or alternatively contact our sales team on the email address shown, mail at Thank you again.